Hello, pocket knife community, knife lovers, knife, en knife enthusiasts, interested viewers. Folder here. I want to do a quick overview and a very quick overview on the CJRB Echo. Yeah, the Echo. Um, so I got into CJRB uh, because of the low price, high value um, of their products. And uh, the Echo is... Uh, no different um definitely one of those knives that you're gonna spend under under 100 bucks for and get very high value first of all it's a ray laconical design and it has the ar rpm 9 steel which is uh HRC of uh, 59 to 61, which is the Rockwell hardness of that steel. And it is a very, very good, respectable all around steel. So it has, um, you know, all the three attributes of uh, edge retention, toughness, and corrosion resistance. And it's decent at all of it. So that's a very, uh, that's a very good thing. So, um, yeah, yeah. So no, these knives are really, really nice. Like I said, you know, 60 bucks, 70 bucks. And, you know, um, even like the stainless one here, I mean, it's all stainless. So yeah, it's not titanium, right? But it's metal and perfectly centered blade. The action is outstanding. It's a ridiculous fidget, 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 ah! fidget toy <laughs> um reverse flick it the slow roll you can use the um the button or you can use the front flipper and i am absolutely horrible at front flipping but not with these detent is actually perfect for front flipping really really good i actually like um i actually like the uh the stainless one a little better you know, uh, you got carbon fiber with stainless liners, and you would think it's the same thing because these are stainless, but stainless scales and stainless liners are a little different. They just are. Just the action's a little different. The way they sound is a little different. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Um, 7.4 inch total. Total length, 7.4. Okay. So it's a medium size knife, right? Not too big, not too small. Right between that 7 and 8 inch. You know, right after 8 inches. Remember, we're going large after 8 inches. 8 inches and over is starting to go large. So this is still not an extremely big knife. Medium size range. 3.2 inch blade. So, you know, all those jurisdictions where 3 inches is okay... You're pretty much good with it. You know, always, always, uh, you know, of course, follow your local laws. Very important. A lot of places you can own, own knives like this, but you can't actually carry them around in your pocket. So you got to just see, you know, what your local jurisdiction allows. Handles 4.2 inches. So, yeah, 4.2. Um, yeah, ergos are a little removed, I would say. You know, the ergos are a little bit removed. When I say removed, they're a little far back, you know. Not terribly far back. I've seen, I've seen worse. Well, not worse. I shouldn't say worse. I've, I've seen more handles where the ergos have you more removed from the, from the blade. Um, and I mention it because there is no front finger choil. If there was a finger choil, then, you know, you, you, you know, then you kind of don't care because, you know, one grip will put you back here and the other grip will put you further up. But this knife does not have that. So the designers of this knife, the designer, um, Ray, Ray, Ray Laconico, uh, did not want you to be able to choke up too much with this. The ergos on this are, are further back. Jimping is okay. Uh, more of a recognizable jimping. In other words, you know, when you feel it, you know exactly where your thumb is. If you're not looking down at the knife when you grab onto it, 
you rub your hand on the jimping, you'll be able to tell exactly where your thumb is. Give you an idea of where you used to, if you're, if you're cutting with this and slicing with this, you'll be able to uh, easily find the jimping. More of a locator type jimping than an actual um, jimping that provides traction. So you have sort of a one cliff blade with a top swedge, little little false edge swedge there. Uh, stone finish, which is very nice because you don't see fingerprints. And it's got three forms of deployment. You've got the you've got the uh, deployment hole in the blade in which you can slow roll or reverse flick. <laughs> that was a weak reverse flick. There's a better one. You have the button lock, which button locks are very fidgety. They're not the strongest. They're not for heavy use. They're for light use button locks, but they're very fidgety. You can deploy the blade extremely easy by just pressing the button lock and flicking with the wrist. This is not an automatic knife. It is a completely manual knife. It's just that you have to give it a little, little bit of wrist and it goes right out. So you got the button lock, you got the deployment hole and a front flipper, right? That's what this is. This is your front flipper. So you would deploy in that fashion, flip it from the front, not the back. You know, or you can, <laughs> I've been doing it all day. I'm terrible with front flickers, flippers, but I actually love this knife. I actually love, it is very fidgety. Um, yeah, so that's the deal with the, uh, with the blade. It's got some belly on it. You know, it's a full flat, except for that swedge, like I said, on top. You get down to the button lock. And... Looks like we got some T6s here. Cause they look they look they look really small to me, so I would imagine, right? Yeah. T6s in the back, you know, always a little bit of a disappointment, but you know, whatever. And T6. Where are we here? This has gotta be an eight. Right, it's gotta be an eight. Yep, and the pivot is a T8. Yeah, you know, whatever. T6 is in the back, T8. It's got a deep pocket clip. Nice deep pocket clip. It's not flush. The deep pocket clip is not flush on the inside, and it is reversible. You can put it on either side. It doesn't, it fits on top, but it doesn't countersink into the scales. But the screws are nice and flat. And this is what it looks like carrying in your pocket. So in your pocket, all you'll see is that nice little thin clip. The entire knife sits down deep in your pocket. So that, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's got good tension. Let's try it out here while I'm seated. Usually if you can move things in and out from the seated position, then you know standing you're good. And yeah, very nice. Very nice. It's got uh it's got two barrel standoffs. So it's an open flow design, as you can see. You can see right through the knife. So it's got an open flow design with You know, wow, are those the liners that are milled out like that? Or are those the, well, no, so there's no liners on this. It's just the stainless steel scales, and they milled them out on the inside. Really nice to save weight. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> and the, and the, the one without the... um. This just has steel liners. They are not milled in any way because the liners are much thinner than the than the full steel. And then on the outside, of course, is the carbon fiber, which is extremely light, a very lightweight material. So yeah, so they milled those out. 
And like I said, it has two it has two wheelbarrow uh, standoffs here, and then another standoff inside that also has the lanyard hole in it. So if you wanted to put like a little lanyard through there, you could inside of that hole. Yeah. Is the carbon fiber one the same way? Yes, the carbon fiber one is the same way. Um. Yeah, so, you know, this is, um, this is very practical tool, very practical tool. Like I said, uh, you know, it, uh, it's an inexpensive, you know, very inexpensive, uh, excellent, excellent cutting tool. Another another success story by uh, <laughs> CJRB. This is the Echo. Um, yeah, what else is there? Plunge grind and finger choil. I mean, fr plunge grind and um, sharpening choil are are in a good uh, fashion here. I guess the influence, the influence of the plunge grind and. Well, actually, it ends, I guess. Let's see where it is. Mm. Yeah, it's about out here. So it's good. Yeah, it's out. It's out to about there. So you got some sharpening that you can do with this and not uh, run into any problems. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um. So, yeah, there you go. I, um, I like it. I like it. Uh, negatives. Do I have any negatives? You know, there's always negatives. <laughs> there's, there's always something about a knife that uh, that's gonna go on that negative side. Um, but you know what? I'm gonna reserve that on this video because, you know, not that this knife's perfect, but for 60 bucks, um, AR RPM 9 steel, 7.4 inch total length. Fantastic. Van very, very, very good ergos. Oh, yeah, you know, also, too, I just want to mention that the ergos on these are different. Now that we start talking about ergos, they are a little bit different. You know, you can definitely see the, um, where the front, uh, downturn on the handle is for the stainless one is different than the uh the carbon fiber they don't feel much different but they are as you can see they left a, they left a little bit of um a little bit of uh milling here so that you can get to the deployment hole with the stainless one and then with the uh carbon fiber they did not they did not mill it down they did not channel it down on that as you can see the difference uh, I think both work though because the deployment hole is unobstructed on both knives. I did say that I like the stainless one a little bit better. I like the ergos a little bit better, just uh, preference. But yeah, so like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump too hard into any any negatives that you know, because it's really not anything that just crabs out at me. And if you got something that costs sixty bucks that you don't have any blaring negatives. No hot spots in the ergos. Just why? Why even say it? Why even talk about it? Just if you need a knife, go get it. <laughs> you know. So, all right, guys. That's all I got. Thanks.